welcome back. Our next guest is a social media personality, best-selling author, and entrepreneur who is about to host her inaugural not another singles conference, yeah, a dynamic two-day mixer bringing together a single men and women from diverse backgrounds who are ready to activate their gifts, discover their untapped potential, and embark on a purposeful life journey. Everyone, please welcome Shade Solomon. Hello. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Oh, welcome. I love the title. Thanks. <laughs> like, not not yeah. another single conference. What is that about? Because I was frustrated <laughs> at all the singles conferences that I attended that I got nothing from. And then God gave me the vision to have my own conference, and I did not want to do a conference at all. And then that's when I got the title, Not Another Singles Conference, because this is not like the ones that I attended before. Okay, so first you have to educate us on what a singles conference looks like, because I, I don't think I've ever attended one. And I'm single, so I, yes. I gotta get a clue here. So <laughs> think of a room of 99 women that are there, potentially looking for a mate or a man, and not seeing any in the room, and then hearing from a bunch of other women who maybe are married about what you should do as a single woman so you can get to where they are. What? Right. What? Right. As if the goal is to be married. Only. <laughs> Which the goal is, right, for uh, many of us, that is what we desire. Of course. I mean, we all want a, a, a companion, mate. right? Right, love, yes. uh -huh. intimacy. But we have our own journeys. And a lot of times, a lot of the messaging that I was hearing was, this is what I did, and this is what you need to do in order to get where I am. And I would leave feeling a lot of shame, right? right. So can you imagine... Now God gives you a vision to have your own conference, and you don't want to do what everyone else does. You want to offer a fresh perspective, a fresh view. You want women to come and actually see men at the conference. Yeah, that's another bonus. I mean, you said 99 women, and so if it's a conference... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I don't mean to giggle because no, I haven't it's, even been there. I haven't even been there and I'm like, oh man, mm. I don't know, I'd be upset if I spent money and there was no men in the room. Right. <laughs> Right, right. Like, you want something to at least look at. Not that you have to leave home with someone that you see, but at least you want to see. I mean, look, we're see. living in a world where everybody wants to do dating apps, right? Right. And so, um, when you're working from that platform, anyone can create whatever it is that they want for people to perceive of them. When you're in the same space, they can't hide it. That is true. Right? That so, and right now, based on, you know, post-pandemia, I don't know if we're really post, but, you know, we're just going to say that. Right. And so, right now, we're kind of coming back to being in person and being together. And so, and I think it's really important that we understand the conditioning that's occurred within these past, right. th past three years Definitely. of us really pretty much creating whatever world it is that we want people to think we live in. That, that part, too. And then, like, the lack of ability to communicate with people. That, too. A lot of people that, looking down. Yes. Right, right. Let's talk to that, though. Yeah, yeah. So, for me, like, I'm a very personable person, and I wear bright colors. It attracts people. I like to have Which, by the way, girl, I got to tell you, I'm sorry <laughs> to cut you off, but this suit is fly. Thank oh, you. my gosh, the pink with the orange. Like, oh, yes. Thank you. I want one. Yes. Yeah. I'll okay. give you the deed. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, so I'm that kind of person. And to come out of, the, out of COVID, and you see a lot of people who are not as interactive or don't really want to talk or have a lot of social anxiety, it, it was it's hard for me kind of like living in this world. But I love to create spaces where we can come together and we can build community. We can meet people that are like-minded, that are on similar journeys or even different journeys. And that's really what I want to have at this conference. I want us to come together and communicate and build community and have these conversations and speak about things that maybe we were dealing and struggling with that we have not really spoken about with one another. So I understand that uh, you just did a tour, a five-city tour for your book, Ready, Set, and Wait. Ready, Set, Wait. Ready, Set, Wait. Yes. Sorry, I added the end. And and, um, and from what I gathered in, in experiencing it, there was a lot of women present. Yes. Right? So did that inspire you to want to now create this conference to basically bring the two sexes together? Definitely. And I get that question all the time. Men ask me, what about the men? What about the men? I mean, I'm a girl's girl, right? right. So I speak to women, and I have not really garnered the ability, I feel, to draw in the men. So for my conference, I brought in men who are men's men, who I know speak to the men and have built community talking to men about you know, what it's like to be a man in this society and all the things that they are up against and have to struggle with and deal with personally. So I included them in this so that we can really draw the men. When I went to D.C., men did come out because I had men who were men's men on the panel and they brought the men in. It, it created a def 
different dynamic. And it was a breath of fresh air for me also. And I mean, I'm confident and comfortable in speaking in those spaces as well. It just hasn't been my platform up until now. Got it, right. And so you have a two-day yes. conference going on and you have panelists set up. Yes. So are there men on these panels yes. as well? All right, let's talk about it. Yeah, so Friday night we have a mixer. Right. So that's, we're gonna get together. Um, you know, talk, listen to some good music. We have performances, we have DJs. So that's the mix on Friday. And that's from what time to what time? That's from 6 to 9. 6 to 9. So it's almost 22nd. like a happy hour on a Friday night. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> right, right, right. On a Friday night, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But except it, it, it's actually uh, a coordinated with an agenda. Yes. Right? And yes. So do you have... Uh, a cap on how many women should be attending and men? So honestly, when I set out the marketing for my conference, I was ambitious and I said I want 70% men, 30% women. Oh my. So <laughs> that's what I wanted. I don't even know if we live in that world. <laughs> exactly, that's why I was really ambitious. <laughs> Especially for me when my audience is predominantly maybe 89% women. Right. Um, that was, so we don't have a cap. We're still just flexible on who can come, but we really want to bring the men out. So we're going to be doing some giveaway tickets for men. Um, and then on Saturday, that's the full day of programming. We have panel discussion, married men, single men, in between men, situationship, you know, different, the whole gamut for Friday night. And we're going to have topics related specifically to men on Saturday. And so how are you qualifying everyone? As far as well, you know, you want you, you don't want you know. <laughs> oh, you, you mean vetting? <laughs> How are we vetting people? I think that's all in the marketing, okay, right? Right. And I I realize that you know the Bronx looks different right? and it, uh, multi generational, multicultural. So I don't want to vet who comes. I want everyone who's interested in building community and is like minded and is looking to really. Um, fulfill their purpose to come out, but there are no qualifiers. No, I get it. I just needed to ask that because it, it sounds like, you know, it's open to anyone who's interested in experiencing this. However, it, it also sounds like, you know, it's a certain vibration. It's a certain, I would say, in the marketing is where we really draw in the people and just where it is, and I know in the Bronx, the dynamic of the people are very diverse. So generally my events garner millennials and older millennials, but I want to tap into the Gen Zers. I want the baby boomers to come as well. So I think So that you want it intergenerational as well. I believe that it will be. Oh nice. I believe that it just it just will be um intergenerational. Nice. So And so what does Saturday look like? I'm sorry. I no, was caught up I was caught up because I was like listening, wait a minute, we're talking about men, but we want men who are uh, men actually of work. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and it also sounds like men of God because you, yes. you also have Christianity incorporated into the program. Yeah, so I'm a Christian, right? right. But I don't want to just only box it in to only Christians can come to this event, right? right? right. Um, but for Saturday, full day of programming, we are having breakout sessions, eight breakout sessions. So when you purchase a ticket, you get an opportunity to have two sessions for the day. We have a panel discussion on dating and relationship. And then we have a fireside chat speaking about life after loss. So uh, young women that I know who became a widow at the age of 20 is going to speak. So different dynamics of love and relationship. And then the topics we're going to speak about are technology, um, media, music, travel. So the focus is really when you're single, what are you doing to maximize your time and your singleness, right? A lot of the conferences I went to, it's like marriage, marriage, marriage. Right. But before we get there, we got to live our lives, right? right? So right. what are we doing to really maximize our time um, and explore different avenues and meet different people? We have different interests. Let's, let's focus on those things. That's how I feel like I've been able to do so much in my singleness, like write a book, go on tour, start businesses. Um, I want to empower other singles to be able to do the same. I feel a lot sit on their hands or they wait or they jump from relationship to relationship they don't really learn about themselves so we have a breakout session on sex and mental health and the intersection between that and faith so it's a full day of programming I've hosted many events in New York City throughout the years and the one thing I realized about my events is that people leave feeling impacted it's not just an event you come you know fake she she no right. one talks to anyone mean girls club like we really set a precedence for what it looks like to come together and to 
really work on who you are and to learn to explore these different things. Yeah, and be welcoming. I understand what yeah, you're saying. And so, right. and so before we go, yes. uh, do, do people have to attend both days? Like, is it a one-shot uh, deal? Like, you know, is it a package deal that they, they buy the tickets and they attend both Friday and Saturday? So or really can good they question. do one or the other? Yeah, really good question. So Friday night, we have a Friday night only ticket if people just want to come to the mixer and see what it's like. And then we have a Friday and Saturday ticket. But we don't have a Saturday only ticket. And we do have cheaper tickets for the men. So, you you know, usually when you go to the clubs, it's women. Women. So, oh, look at you. So for the men, <laughs> right. So club like days. That, so like now that. those men are cheaper. You're reversing the Right. Uh, even though, you know, I question that. but <laughs> No, I know. And someone said uh, give away free tickets to the men. I'm like, no, I want the men to pay to come. But we will be giving away free tickets. And How about you do it two for one? Two for one, like for the men. You mean two for, for one. one? Someone mentioned that. That's better because then you get more men, and I like you know that. you give them a deal, but you don't give them a discount from the women. You right. know because we don't. Know, it's kind right. of like, you know, standards, you know. <laughs> right. That's exactly what I was thinking. We're on the same page, so I'm gonna definitely consider that. But all the information will be on the website. If we do make that change, I'm gonna definitely consider that. You know, oh, the first oh my person gosh, to I say just that. Blasted you on air. No, please. As a, as, a, as a consideration, because you know definitely. why? Because I think it's important for men to understand that you know you can actually explore other relationships without necessarily looking for an intimate relationship yes. right by being in environments that are are purposeful yes which is what you've designed and you know what's interesting I had a conversation with someone yesterday it was a man who was saying he was tired of the dating landscape right and he the women he meets are like this and like that I'm like you need to d dip in a different pond the reason why you keep dealing with the same women is because you keep fishing in the same pond. How about you fishing in a different pond? So I invited him to a singles conference. Like, we all want to be, men may not say it, but they want to be in relationships and they want to meet, you know, good, nice women and whatever their desires are. We both, I feel like, have similar desires. Why don't we come together and see what we can build? And if it's platonic is platonic right but if it's more it's more but right. at least let's come together right exactly i think that's where relationships are built on yes. first anyway right they're definitely built on friendships right because right. the other part kind of dwindles away if, right if, you don't if, like if though. there's not a meeting of the mind you exactly. know yeah there's no substance right right so hopefully you guys are really listening i mean yes. and the ladies of course the ladies are welcome but I, that doesn't seem to be uh, a problem for you with uh, as far as filling the space we're, we're, we're looking for the men we want to the join men in the party definitely and women come out as well but yes we want the men and the women but we really want the men like you said so thank you for driving that that of, home of we want to see you yeah right we want we want to see the men doing good too yeah right we absolutely. want to see the men excelling as well right we want to see the men leading and these spaces so yes. I think that it's important that we you know come together yeah and be together and be together and be together right and respect respect each other understand each other right which I feel that a conference is also going to offer like those different perspectives as well yeah. maybe things that we have never considered or thought about like the truth right not what is mainstream right right or what it's supposed to be or what uh, even society has uh, determined to be the, you know, happily ever after. That part, too. Yeah. That part, too. All right. Too. Oh, my gosh. Love yeah. it. Shade. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody, Shade Sullivan, social media personality, best-selling author, entrepreneur, and host of Not Another Singles Conference, which is what we've been discussing. And once again, the Not Another Singles Conference is set to take place Friday, September 22nd at Harvest Fields Community Church, located at 26, 26 East Tremont in the Bronx. And, of course, they've got a full day on the 23rd uh, full with panels for more information you can visit nasc.live and for more on Sade you can check her out on Instagram at Sade Solomon stay tuned our open artist spotlight is coming up next